I'm in, a, in a, this holster, when I grab it, I'm, I'm acquiring my grip right here. Yeah, I do that by driving as high up on that beaver tail as I can possibly get. What I'm tr trying to do is get the center of my, of my arm, center of my hand and wrist and arm portion form, as close to the center axis as a bore. Okay? The lower I get, the more leverage that, that, that works against me with that recoil impulse. The higher up I can get, the more control I get. I actually grab where my fingers contact the bottom of the trigger guard, and then my pinky and ring finger grasp the grip first, and then I squeeze the, the gun. What that does is it actually pulls that gun down into my hand. I've got uh, as high a grip as I can possibly get, and I've got tension holding that pistol stable in my hand. Okay. By doing so, by, do, by doing that, I get the most control on that pistol that I can possibly get. All right. When relaxed, my index finger should point parallel to the axis of bore. So when I'm pointing, my natural ability to point is now used with a pistol in my hand. Okay. I can point that pistol naturally and intuitively based on, on my body mechanics because I, over time, have learned to be able to point at things that I identify. So I'm, I'm using that. On the other side, my grip, okay, my non-firing grip, support side, I make sure that those knuckles go into the furrows in between, uh, starting at my index finger, down to my ring finger, and then just press that like a lemon squeezer. As I push that gun out, my grip tightens on its way out. I don't tighten the grip up and try and press the gun out, or go all the way out and then tighten my grip up. Okay, just it actually compresses as it goes out. My thumb is pointed parallel to the axis of bore as well. Okay, by doing so, what I'm doing is locking my wrist, and again, using my body's natural ability to point. Thumb or finger. I mentioned yesterday, back in the 90s, they got on Bill Clinton about pointing at the audience. So he used his thumb. It's just as intuitive and just as natural, but it uses the body's natural ability to point. Now, when I'm when I'm presenting this pistol, I'm actually pointing with my thumb and my index finger. Okay, but now there's a pistol in my hand. As I do it, okay, I'm, I'm using my body's natural ability to point. At short distances, okay, extremely short distances, confined space shooting if you're doing CQB or you're on a, doing VPSS or inside of a, a vessel, at those distances, overwhelmingly your speed will come from your body position. Okay? Your ability to shoot at short ranges is going to be driven. The speed and accuracy that you get is going to be driven by your body position. Okay? So the next thing is stance. Just like yesterday, when you're standing, you want to be square, pelvis towards whatever you're going to engage, right? In an aggressive but not exaggerated posture. Okay, I don't lean forward. If I want to lower my center of gravity, I just I just flex my knees. As long as my head is forward, it forms a counterweight. Okay? I also don't want to have my head forward and try and look up through my through the top of the lens of my eye. Okay, it cuts down the vision because the the, the area that I can see, say, is about here. When I look down, I'm just catching my target in the top of that vision, and a lot of my vision is on the ground, which is unnecessary. So make every attempt to keep your head up when you shoot, as opposed to craning your neck and forcing your eye to come up and look through the top of the lens or straining your eye while you're shooting. Okay? <clears throat> so on stance, it's, it's a semi-athletic stance, feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart, firing side toe on line with the non -firing, center of non-firing foot, slight bend in the knees, Effectively what you want, based on your body type and the kit that you're wearing, is shoulders, knees, toes. Press that pistol out, okay, until it naturally stops at a point where you've got control. Okay, remember what I said yesterday about that, that intersection, okay? Strength, dexterity, okay? Okay. That's that is the that's the triad. When you're shooting, that's what you're managing: strength, dexterity, and visual acuity. Okay, power, control, and vision. That is those are the the, the factors that are going to give you rapid target acquisition, rapid follow-on shots, etc. Now, to get that intersection, you have to find a point based on your body type where you, where you can exert the best of all those, okay? Strength and dexterity, talked about it yesterday, we call a rope grip for a rifle. When you grab rope and brace, you have a natural flex in your arm, okay? That's a position that I go to as a default that gives me power and control, right? If I walk up, okay, Larry, I, I reach forward and I hand him a magazine, okay? There's a bend in my arm. Okay. Um, if I go over to DC and I, and I shake his hand, look at the bend of my arm. 
I reach back, grab my magazine on the way out, look at the bend in my arm. It is the same, okay? Over time, I have learned to use that, that extension of my arm, okay, for power control of that appendage. I know the, the distance, so when I step to them, I don't have to keep adjusting my arm distance. I know that when I step to grasp something, based on a learned pattern of response, response learning as a child, that at this, at this bend in my arm, I can judge the distance that I need to grasp something, okay? Again, I'm going to a position of, of power and control, someplace that I know. It's consistent. Hand somebody something, shake someone's hand, grab something back from them, okay? If you reach for it to grab something off of, if I can make this balance, we'll see. I'll do it here. I have a magazine right there. I walk to it, I judge distance, I reach forward and grab it. Look at the bend in my arm. It's exactly the same, okay? You long gunners will appreciate that. What am I now building into my shooting style by, by using that extension of my arm? Consistency. What's that? Consistency. I'll build consistency in. If I do it properly, I will extend my arms to the same spot every time. I'll use the same flex because I've got power and control, all right? The vision part of it, the visual acuity part of it, if you are not at that extension, you'll have the gun locked way out and you'll, you'll, you will violate strength and dexterity. And if you have the gun way in, now you'll violate strength, dexterity, and visual acuity. I'll have that gun too close to me. If, I have, if you have guys shooting a pistol really close to them, the rear sight as it appears to them will be huge. Okay, it'll, be, it'll appear much larger because it's closer to their vision. That means that their front sight, any discrepancies in their sight picture will be magnified because that pistol is too close to their head, too close to their vision. Okay? So if they have a pistol too close in, they're violating everything. If they have it too far out, at a minimum, they're violating strength and dexterity. Right? Body mechanics drives your, your speed and accuracy of engagement. Right? It's hugely important. Now, 